magazine started 20 years ago, the assumption was that most of our readers cannot be out in their daily lives. Now today, 90, almost 90% 90 of our readers are out in their everyday life. They're looking for something different from their lesbian magazine. You know, they don't just want to read coming out stories. They want to read stories about the whole of their life. Um, and so we've definitely taken that into consideration. And we, you know, we try to have these, an annual retreat where we talk about how our audiences change and how we can best serve that because the Curve Magazine of last year cannot be the Curve Magazine of tomorrow. It just is not, it's not what the community wants. And if the magazine is gonna survive, it has to be what the readers want. Franco, can you give a couple examples of stories you've run in the last year that really generated feedback from readers and, and, and had a good response? Well, it's always the, you know, the most heated debate things that are, that get the most reader response. I mean, you say something that pushes somebody's button and you're gonna get the most letters to the editor. Uh, but it, just the way our community's changed over the past, you know, 20 years, we've been adding a lot of letters to the, uh, the G, and I think as we continue to add uh, initials to our ABCDFG, um, that the community, the younger community, is saying, you know what? I don't want labels. I don't want any of those labels. I want to just be me, and whatever I am, I am. Um, and how, from a gay and lesbian publication, do you address that? And it's a, it's a real concern. Um, where today, you know, we have this 150 most desirable queer women piece, which is